so for this lesson um i picked the bubble lesson it was chapter six in the more picture perfect science lessons um i decided to make it for kindergarten and my learning objective is students will be able to answer the question are free floating bubbles always round after taking part in an activity where they blow bubbles and record what shape they are using a tally chart and data table um, the content description in this experiment, children will work on un their understanding of what properties matter has and the structures that it can take form of. Also, children need to understand that matter can be a solid, liquid, or gas. For this lesson, they need to understand that liquid has no specific shape, but rather that it takes the shape of the container that holds it, such as the bubble wand. So it will be a circle in the bubble wand. Um, the assessment procedure, I'll use a data table that students will use to record their own data from each experiment using a round bubble wand, square bubble wand, and triangular bubble wand. Um, each student will fill out their own table during the experiment and include their hypothesis about what will happen when they use each one and if they think the shape will change or stay the same. Um, children's current understanding, um, children begin exploring and experimenting at a very young age. Um, also, children have a general knowledge that objects can be a solid, liquid, or gas. Um, they are aware of what bubbles are and how they blow a bubble or pop a bubble. However, they need to further explore how a liquid has no shape, but rather that it takes the form of the container that it is in, but are aware that it can change shape. Um, so to introduce the topic, I will start by asking children, have you ever blown a bubble and what did you use? Um, then I will read the book Bubble Bubble aloud to the class and then ask, what were some of the bubble shapes that we saw? And can you really blow bubbles in the shape of a boat, elephant, or snake? Because those are some of the bubbles that they blew in the book. Um, and then we'll have a conversation about that. Um, this activity takes place outside, so we go outside. Um, but the, for the development part, um, I put students into pairs of twos. And then once we're outside, I'll distribute the materials. Um, and I would give students time to experiment and discover what types of shapes they're able to make with their bubble solution, which is one of the things that they're given. So when they blow a bubble with the wand, is it a circle, is it a square? Um, and they'll just record that initial data. Um, and then after the free exploration, they'll um, take turns and see and start tallying what it um, shape it makes. And while they're blowing the bubbles, um, once the bubble leaves the wand, I'll explain that they're free floating, um, so they're in the air just going and then they'll pop. And allow students to time to come up with ideas as to how they could determine if bubbles are always round and find the answer to this question. You could then suggest that students could use other shaped wands when they're blowing bubbles. Um, explain to students and show them a data table about shapes of bubbles and tell them that when scientists want to know the answer to a question, they create an experiment and that's what we're doing. And when they do an experiment, they write down the information in an organized way, um, just like their data table or tally chart. That's kind of so they're kind of uh, scientists there so they can take on that role. The information that they collect is called data and then distribute the pipe cleaners to students and have them bend and manipulate the pipe cleaners to create different shapes like a round wand, a square wand, and a triangular wand. Before they use the wands, have students make predictions about what they think will happen when they use the wand. After giving them more bubble solution, then have them record the information on their tally chart again about what shape the free floating bubbles are. So some questions you can ask students while they're doing this experiment and while they're doing the activity to kind of make them think um, is what can you observe about the shapes of the bubbles? Uh, what else can you observe about the bubbles? Why do you think the free floating bubbles you observe were always round? Are free floating bubbles always round? How could we find out? When you use the round wand, what shape do you think the free floating bubble will be? When you use the square wand, what shape do you think the free floating bubble will be? And when you use a triangular wand, what shape do you think the free floating bubble will be? Then um, after we're done with all of that, we are going to have a conclusion. For the conclusion, we're going to look at the data students recorded and read the book Pop, a book about bubbles. After the read aloud, have students compare their data with another group and discuss the results so that way they can kind of compare what they saw and what others saw and talk about it. Um, and students will realize that no matter what shape the wand is, the free floating bubbles are always round. So it's, you know, even if they're in a square, it's still, once they leave the wand, it becomes a, um, bubble, a uh, brown bubble. So for some accommodations, I said that I will remind students that they are not to put the bubble solution in their mouth or eyes. 
Um, also, it helps students if they're not sure how to blow bubbles and remind them to use gentle breaths when they blow bubbles because some students can blow too hard and it can become frustrating. And then if children have a hard time staying on task, I will give them reminders because being outside, it can become distracting. And also, since it's kindergarten, they may need help with reading for the data table. So I will use the shape and the word um, just like they did here. So this is the data table that they gave. So it's for each, they show what the one looks like, and then they can write over here whether it was round or square once they blow it. So that way they have, they can make a connection to the word and the picture. So after the assessment, for the post assessment, um, I'll use a data table that students will record their own data from each experiment using a round bubble wand, square bubble wand, and triangular bubble wand. Um, and each student will fill out their own table during the experiment and include their hypothesis about what will happen with each one if they think it will take shape, change shapes. Um, once we're done with this, my hope is that for students' current understanding, after children blow bubbles and see that no matter what shape the wand is, that the free-flowing bubble is round, then they are able to explain that that happens because liquid has no shape. Also, they can explain how scientists create an experiment to answer a question that they have and how the data will give them an answer or reason why it happens. So for this, I had to adapt a little. Um, the materials that they suggest in the book are bubble solutions, small cups, round bubble wands, and pipe cleaners. Um, since I don't have all of those, I made my own bubble solution using water and dish soap and dish straw. And if you, you can suck it up and then you can blow a bubble. So here we can see that all the bubbles that were made are round because this is round, but even if I did have a different shaped straw, still students would be able to tell, you know, it free-floating bubble is at least round.